All right, everybody, are you ready for some horror? That's right, today's update is for the King of Horror Project Pan. Before I give you all the info, I'm gonna ask you to please do all of the things. You know what they are. All right, so this is actually round two of the King of Horror Project Pan. And um, the hashtag on this is hashtag King of Horror Pan. I think it was different the first year. Now, this round started on Stephen King's birthday, which was September 21st of 2023. So not too long ago. I'm not too far behind. And this will end September 21st of 2024. So this has monthly updates. It is kind of left off. It's, it's a rolling project, but we can do as many or as few as we want at a time. So it's a little bit open-ended in that regard. This was, of course, created by the amazing Stephanie, who has an IG channel, and that is foo underscore pans, F-O-O underscore P-A-N-S. Now, um, she did do this in collaboration with the Fantastic Ladies group on Facebook. You can find Stephanie's IG and the Fantastic Ladies in the description box. This year, what she did was she went from the 40 full-length novels to 53 prompts, including the novels and the standalone novellas and collabs. Um, and the ones under the Richard Bachman name. So that's where we got the extra 13 from this time. Now, she did not do short story collections or sequels. So you just get the first book if it's a series. And I think that's the Dark Tower. I don't know. I'm not familiar enough with the writings because, quite frankly, they scare the crap out of me. So there you go. Now, yes, I did miss a bit. So I don't actually even know when. I don't know what the last update was. I have no idea. I don't know what's going on. I'm going to tell you what I have in here, what is finished, and then we're just going to go on from there. I put these back into the numerical order that she has them on the list or that I had written them down as because I think some were some carryovers from my first round to this round. But anyway, the first thing I have in is the Gunslinger. Okay, Dark Tower. This is a Holy Grail item you do anything for, your Dark Tower. I brought in this one, the It Cosmetics Tightline. Now... I didn't open this until the end of September, so this one is going to still go for the rest of this month, and then I will be eliminating it. It's the one with the, well, that was pretty brilliant. It's got that itty bitty baby wand, and I think for my bottom lashes, this is my holy grail. I have not found the other ones to work as well for me. I know that's not everybody's opinion, and there are other great bottom lash mascaras out there. They just don't work with my eyelashes? I don't know. So at this point, when I am filming this for the December update, we have got 37 uses on that so far. That one, like I said, you will hear the total next month for that. Now, the next thing I have in is Misery, an item you're obsessed with. For that, I had brought in my Lancome Sills Booster. This one is getting a little bit beat up and it is time to retire it. This actually opened August 2nd, and I put it in through the end of November. So there's still a little bit of product, but it is getting gummy and it is getting hard to use, so it's drying out. I ended up with 68 uses total on this in this project, and this is going to be something that you're going to see probably in the December empties, just so you're aware. I'm trying to get as much in to that video, or I tried to get as much into that video as I could. I think you're going to see this after that. I'm not filming in order, so everything's screwy. But I wanted to get as much into the books and done so that I'm not struggling at the very, very end of the month and trying to get things ready to close out the year. All right. Do you care? No. But I'm telling you anyway because that's how I am. All right. Then the next thing I have is Cycle of the Werewolf. So something that was silver for silver bullets. For that, I brought in the travel size of the Smashbox Photo Finish Primer, which you know I love these. This is the 0.34 ounce. And yes, I scraped it out. It It's completely empty. So this is obviously a finished product and a finished prompt. Then we've got the Talisman, an item you like to travel with. For me, I like to actually have serums that are in small sizes, mini samples, whatever, to travel with, just because it's easier to have littler things in that travel bag. So for that, I had brought in, oh, jeez, my computer is doing weird stuff. Hold on. All right. I had brought in the La Roche-Posay. This is the Hyla B5 Serum. This is a 0.1 ounce. You can't even see that. That's what it looks like. So it's got their typical white and blue. 
I liked this. This is not a bad hyaluronic acid serum. I do not need one at this point, so I'm. it's not on the repurchase list, but it is a good one if you're out there looking for one. It's not bad. I don't know what the cost is on this. And it is finished, so this is also an empty and a completed prompt. We got a good, few good ones in here. All right, then we have thinner, an item that gets used up too quickly. For me, that is the Elemis Pro Collagen Cleansing Balm. And I don't care if it's the Naked or the Original or even the Rose. I, have, I don't think I've tried the Rose. But I do love these. I forgot to put on lipstick. I was, well, I had lipstick on. I just didn't refresh it. But because they're expensive, I think they go pretty quickly. This one is a completed one that will also be out of this project. Since we're talking about it, I'm working on my, what's left of my lipstick. You know, you don't get to everything. You try and be prepared to film, but if we didn't take a little bit of a crazy train break right in the middle of something that I was doing, it just wouldn't be me. All right, next thing we have is desperation. Item that keeps coming back, something that you repurchase frequently. For me, this is one of the things that I actually do purchase. This is the Lancome Definicils. This is my favorite of the Lancome line for the mascaras. I like having waterproof. I use this in conjunction with other things. I had made a comment saying that I liked this on its own, but I absolutely love it with other things. I kind of really love it on its own too, but you know, whatever. So this also came in August, or opened August 2nd, and then I put it in the project and um, closed out for the end of November, giving me 75 uses on this tube of mascara. And that's another completed prompt. I got through quite a few, so I'm doing pretty well here. I'm happy with myself. All right, then we have Bag of Bones, and this is a carryover carry item for me. This is an item that is a curse in some way. Hard to use or pan, you know, just hard to work with, whatever. I brought in a Dermalectives eye cream, which I can't get the, the picture in, but it was a 1.75 ounce eye cream. That is a lot of eye cream. It was in a big glass jar, and the cap was plastic with silver on it, so the silver started flaking. So as I'm doing eye cream, I'm getting flecks of silver on my face, which is, I have enough issues with things that have sparkle in them. I don't need that too. So anyway, what I ended up doing is before I left, I transferred what was left. You good there, Lou? I think I can hear Emmy snoring, but I don't know which side she's on. Yep, there's Emmy. She's snoring. Um, but anyway, so I transferred the dermalectives into this just to travel with it. And I had 66 uses on the jar before I put it into this. I literally cleaned out the jar completely with an additional 31 uses. That means that jar is empty, it is gone, it is done. I got 97 uses in this project for that eye cream. And I think it's an expensive one, so it was kind of nice to have that done. But I don't go through eye creams quickly. That thing lasted me a long, long time. All right, then we have got Dreamcatcher, an item from the past, an old item in your collection. This is a carryover. This is what's left of my MAC Rosebound lips, lip liner, not lipstick. It's a lip gloss, I believe. That is all that's left. Let me see that. But the thing is, is I threw it in my box when I um, went from Minnesota to Arizona, and I just found it. I forgot I had it in there. So it has not changed from the last update. We are still there from September. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I lose things every once in a while. It happens. All right. Then we have got Gwendy's Button Box. A gift item or a gift or item you wished for. There's Lulu. She's going to move seats. So I decided that this was one of those that I just, I had heard about it and I wanted to try it. And I found it at the CCO. Okay, seriously? I can't open it. There we go. So this is the Bobbi Brown highlighter. This is the mini size of it. I didn't get it at Sephora. I got it at the CCO. It does come with a mirror. That's what it looks like. That is in pink glow. I just put this in for a 10 use goal and I have hit that goal. So this will just be rolling back into my collection and it is completed for this project. Now, okay, seriously, itchy. Then we're going to move on to the things that we are bringing in. I figured out how many things I had left and how many I needed to roll in every month um, to 
actually make sure I hit all the prompts this time because I wasn't able to the first time, so some carried, and I want to make sure I get to them all because I don't know if this is going to come back or not. I mean, we've still got a ways to go. So that means I'm going to bring in five, five, five items. Five, yes, five. I can count. So the first thing I am bringing in is for number six, the long walk, an item that takes a long time to finish. Well, you know I just finished my eye cream. I am working on another one that I had had open that is almost done. So I'm going to bring in this. This is a Lancome Absolute um, Revitalizing Eye Cream. It is a 0.16 ounce. It's only 5 milliliters of product, but like I said, eye creams take me forever, and I don't know when I'm going to get to actually start this. It's just this little gold cutesy thing, and it's a plastic container. But that's what it looks like, because it is full up to the top. As you can see, it's right up on that edge there. So this, I, it started at, it is starting at 15.2 grams, this container. And I will just track by weight then when we do updates. But I can recycle the box now. Yay! The next thing that I am going to be bringing in is for Insomnia, a red item for the Crimson King. I found this in my basket of goodies. This is the Shiseido Ultimune Power Infusing Concentrate. So it is a serum, and I don't know if you can see. The, when I tip it, you can see that it's a like a white, milky liquid, I think, that moves. Um, this is 0.33 ounces. It's starting at 23.6 grams. This will be used to completion. Because I like having all of those fun serums and things in my skincare rotation. I love trying different serums. All right, then Rose Matter, a pink or rose item. Well, I'm going to bring this in. This is relatively new to my collection. This is the Tree Hut Shea Sugar Scrub. This is in Moroccan Rose. So it is pinkish and it is rose. So I figured that met the prompt. These are, what are these? Oh, jeez. I'm tired. I can't see. So I need the magnifying glass to tell you what this actually weighs. They came out with these little mini ones. They're 155, 156 grams of product. They're five and a half ounce jars. So I weighed it on my scale, 194.9 grams start weight, including the packaging. This is going to come into completion. And that those take me a little while too. I don't use them super quick. So I was really excited that they came out with minis this year. I got it from Ulta in case you missed that. All right, then we have the, the Colorado Kid, an item you don't know where it came from. That's this. I have absolutely no idea where this came from. I don't know what brand it is. I don't know anything about it. I didn't swatch anything. It is a kind of gold, kind of a greenish gold though. So yeah, there's literally no label on it. I don't know what it came with. I'm sure it came in some kind of a, well, here, here's a sample of, or here's one shade out of something, and it came in a bunch of other things, but I got nothing. I don't have a clue what brand or anything. It feels nice, though, so I figured, why not? I could have given you samples. Rosebound, which you've seen before. I love this thing. I wish they still made them. And then the Bobbi Brown, which I couldn't open. They didn't have anything else color. So that's the Bobbi Brown. This is a, it's a nice highlighter. I mean, it's not anything crazy, but it's got a good shine to it. So, all right. There's one other thing I'm bringing in. Sorry. Oh, do you even wonder why I refer to myself as the crazy train? Seriously, it's because of things like this. Okay, then we've got Billy Summer, an item you want killed off or finished. Well, I found one of these. This is the Ordinary. This is the, the Hyaluronic Acid. Um, it is 2% plus B5. It is the one ounce bottle. This is the last one that I have here. I didn't realize that it was still here. So this is brand new, has not been opened and it weighs in at 79.7 grams and i'm going to just put this into completion also so we will be able to mark it because you can see here what the level is and we are at the top to start so i will mark this as we go through and do it by weight also and then i'll recycle that box all right that is everything that i am doing for this project so let's get to the music moment 
And I thought, well, King of Horror, I kind of like occasionally when I can to stick with the theme. And I was like, hmm, huh, what do I want to do? So I just like randomly Googled like nightmare songs. And I should have known this because this is actually a band I like. This is actually something that's in my playlist. And I've actually, I've seen them live. I think I have the album, probably. Anyway, what we're doing this month is Nightmare from Avenged Sevenfold. Kind of self-explanatory why I picked that. Now, the song Nightmare is from the fifth studio album, Nightmare. So the, it's, the self, or it's the title track off of the album. It was released on May 18th, 2010. At that point, with what was going on, they had recently lost their drummer, the Rev, and he was very, very instrumental in writing the tracks for this album. So the songwriting credits go to the lead singer, M Shadows, and then to the Rev, and that is actually how they're listed, not by their real names in this listing. Um, so the, the song itself and then the video for it are very cool. Now they tie in together, but there's a couple of different things. Because the Rev had passed away, they did for that album use a lot of what he had already laid down as far as, because he did a lot of backing vocals and he was the drummer. They did have another drummer that came in to finish things off and then I think toured with them too. But when they did the video, they specifically chose the drummer that came in. Um, I want to say it was Mike Portney. Am I right on this? I think I am. La 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 la. I'm pretty sure I'm right. But anyway, yes, Mike Portney, um, he's not in the video. And that was kind of an intentional thing that he chose not to be. He didn't want to be. But in the video, there are scenes where you have the Rev's drum kits. So in a sense, it was kind of to honor him, to recognize that he, even though he was no longer there, that he was a big part of this the album, the song, the whole thing. So they intentionally did it that way. And like I said, Mike Portney actually, it was kind of, I think, his choice that he chose to not be in there. So there's a scene where, in the video, where you see the Rev's drums, and then there's like kind of a light behind it that kind of morphs into the Rev. So, there, I mean, that's kind of cool. It, it was a very, very nice tribute, I thought. Now, uh, this song shows up in a bunch of different places. But what the song itself is about is actually it's somebody speaking to a person who is being damned for their wrongdoings on earth. So it's probably someone who is already a resident of hell. And it's this person pointing out to the incoming person that the reason that they're there is because of the things that they did in their life. So it's kind of a, there's a point in there, and I'm trying to think of the exact lyric, and I don't know that I'm going to get it right, but it's something about how it feels to know that you belong here, that you did all these things, that's the reason you're here. Now, the video for it, they actually used an old hospital setting, but the video starts with M Shadows on a gurney being wheeled through the hospital, and they did use an old hospital to do this. There are points where you see the other members of the band in tormented feet ways also. Um, so it, that's kind of interesting, frightening, the whole nine yards. Uh, not at all out of character for the band, in my opinion. They did this video with the idea of taking the content from the movie Jacob's Ladder. So that's what the inspiration is behind that, and that's an old Tim Robbins movie. And isn't it? Okay, and now am I wrong? Isn't Jacob's Ladder a Stephen King thing? Okay, if it's a Stephen King novel, I'll actually put it on the screen because I don't remember. Uh, so I thought that was kind of cool, the, the tie-in with the movie being the inspiration. So, yeah, it's a important I thought it would be wrong to have himself in the video. But yeah, it's so the scene from Jacob's Ladder where he's being pulled through the hospital on a stretcher, that's where it came from. And the reason that they wanted to do that specifically and kind of emulate that scene was because that was one of the Rev's favorite movies too. So there are several ways in which they do pay homage to him throughout of, throughout 
the album, the videos, all of it, which is very cool. Um, I think, oh, this actually was certified two times platinum in the U.S., silver in the U.K., so the platinum indicates that it had over 2 million certified units of sales, and the silver for the U.K. is over 200,000. They did some weird stuff with the teasers for this, and they're known for doing that kind of stuff where they'll put out a teaser for an upcoming song release or video release that they have going on. So there was something that was out there on one platform, but then it was pulled rather quickly, then it was re-released on another one, and then they did a premiere on like their website as well as, I think it was MTV2 or something like that. But the band is very active in how they present their stuff. So that's kind of cool. I think that is everything I need you to know. I am going to link the video down below in the description box, as I always do. But the, the video itself, because it is based on a movie that is somewhat frightening, is its own horror show, in my opinion. And the lyrics of the song, too, if you actually listen to what it's like talking about, depending on how you take it, like I said, whether it is a person that's already in hell or just a person telling someone, hey, these are all the things that you did wrong in your life. These are, you know, it made your soul easy to seal. Because I, when I first heard this, I thought maybe it was the devil speaking to someone about why they were coming to that realm. But the other things that I had read indicated that it might just be another resident of hell. So up to your interpretation. But if you listen to the lyrics, it's basically like, you did all of this to yourself. These are the results. These are the consequences of your actions. So in some ways, it can be a cautionary tale, too. But the, the frightening part for me is thinking about the fact that you live your life, whether you're good or bad, but there's that idea of judgment and that the actions that you do have consequences, that you won't escape doing the bad things that you do, that there will be that punishment. And I think that the idea of going to hell for being a bad person isn't, maybe I have a vivid imagination, but to me that sounds horrifying enough. So that's what we have got for you this time. Thank you for giving me a bunch of your time and letting me ramble as usual, because that's what I do. The girls and I will see you in the next one. So until then, see ya. Bye.